Mmm. This is good. It's a Kit Kat. Uh, it's a giant Polish Kit Kat. How about um, I can just put from the here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh yeah, you know that when you eat something uh, sugary or chocolatey, and then you drink Coke, and then it, like <laughs> it's really gross. It's like kind of sometimes it gets like it's not happening to me right now, but sometimes it gets too bubbly. Mm-hmm. It gets I so bubbly. I definitely just had a reaction. <laughs> I almost said this Coke goes really well with the Polish tort, but I was having such reaction mm. gonna, in my mouth. I'm gonna down this one. Just do it. Mm. Yeah, help. Yeah, I will. <coughs> All the technology you need to keep it on the top. Press it on the nose. Do you ever imagine yourself as a little girl? Sometimes I have memories of myself as a little girl. What are you thinking of right now? Um, running around outside in shorts, barefoot. Where? Um, at home, where I grew up. Which was? Indiana. Indiana. In the country. Oh, that's right. I was thinking of Colorado, but no. No, that came later. No. <coughs> um, swimming. I kind of lived a, a, like a wild child. That's how Z imagines you every day. No, I don't think so. Yes, he thinks about you all the time as a little girl. <laughs> so you just ran wild outside. Yeah. The, my mother kind of like out, get out of the house. And I had two sisters and we lived outside. When I when I got to um, come down, I've never and, been. Were you totally naked? Yeah, remember? I've never been totally naked live on stage. Yeah, you I always had a little something on. Wait, did I, no, I had I had something, right? I had, no, I had the head. I, I mean, I had, we were in the video for right. Channel J for. Wait, did you have Frank anything Dell's on? Frank Dell's The Temptation of Saint Anthony. Did you have anything on in Channel J? No. I can't remember. No, I'm telling you right now. Oh yeah, shoes. Did you have a mustache? Yeah. <laughs> that's a beard. I had a beard. Okay, you're right. You're right. I had trying. to have a little something. No, that's that's important. Like a bike. And it was a beard made of my own hair. I took the oh, hair out color? of my, really cool. wow. you know, brush my hair after a couple weeks. To get out. Full of hair. Yank it yeah. off. Put some double stick tape on it. Yeah. Well, have you seen anything recently where people have been naked? I mean, the last thing I recall is young jeans. Untitled feminist show. I but didn't see that. What's untitled. this? How? Well, tell me about the. Uh... And they were trying, you know, because we were just coming off a of Hamlet, and they were using, they were using the video footage from the performance as sort of their source material, oh. you know. And they also, I guess, it was. Were a book. they playing it on? Uh... That was the thing. I assumed that they would like have some kind yeah. of like light, but they didn't. I guess what they were doing was more like low tech. Or... Yeah, exactly, and sort of just internalizing that, and then kind of going with it from there. Um, but yeah, it was interesting because they did, there was a lot of nudity and it was, you know, they would take their clothes off and put them back on and things like that. But it always seemed very, I don't know, like they were trying to make this communal atmosphere, you know, I guess like the original production, I don't know. Did you see the original? No, I oh, didn't. Okay. I didn't come here till later. Oh, right. 70s. My mom asked, she's like, she came to one of the screenings of like yeah. when we were screening the archives, you know, but she came and she's like, why is there always so much nudity? <laughs> like in this. And I'm like, maybe it's just um, uh, a metaphor for openness. You like openness, don't you? That's what I told her. <laughs> I was like trying to like school her really quick. You, you like know? openness, don't you? Don't you like it when people are nice and open to you? She's like, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, and then she, I'm like, well, maybe it's just a metaphor for that, you know, but I think it's probably not as simple. 
But you guys were talking about how like it's more commercial now or something. You know what I mean? Like Somehow. The commercialization. Of it, people well, I'm just it. thinking of people are so considering how they're going to market, market themselves. Right, and, right. Sure. Yeah. But I wonder, did Richard check? I mean, I don't know, but like I'm did coming. the performance group, did they... Wasn't nudity probably part of the selling point of that as well? No, wonder, it wasn't done so? for that reason. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's very it feels, seems to me. Right, I mean, sure. I'm sure they wanted people in the theater, but right. I think it came from a different place. Although, you know, most good work does come from a <laughs> different place sure. than marketing. Where are you going? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah, also that, that scariness where it's like if you show it all and then everybody will see it and then everyone will be sick of it. You know, that like they'll, yeah, they'll already yeah. eat you. Right, yeah. You're already, you're already right. consumed. Right. You're yeah. like, oh, I already saw Sorry. this. Sorry. You know, yeah. like and on to the next mm -hmm. one. It's that right. kind of this disposability. Been there, done it. Like, disposability <laughs> of porn. You know, oh. the disposability of I it. think that might have something to do because with it. Because it's like, I remember I made um, it's not, a movie uh, in. Um, right, nakedness is more associated with uh, sex and porn and disposability. Yeah. And and I think it was more about openness and liberation. And, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh. I can go downstairs She's probably and angry. And she's her, in her mid-50s, well, she she's angry. You think so? Yeah. But she was, like it's hard to avoid she was like glowing. She was like Your loss of uh, social and many other kinds of power. Mm. It's hard not to get really angry. No, that's when you get powerful. In your 50s and your 60s, mm, you know? Maybe if you're rich or a man or... No. No, no, no. There, there, is, there, is some, there are some invisi invisibility blues. Especially women. Not for men, I don't think. Not so much for men. How old are you? I'm 38. Yeah, you don't know yet. We're almost Look the at same you. age. Enver! Oh, oh wait, he's here just oh for my God. God. Enver, uh, young G wants to dress me up. Really? Yeah, so we can use makeup or wigs or whatever you want. Enver, are you busy? You could... Nice. Can you play with us? Talk about what oh, to do. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think? Um, I I'm thinking like a wig, makeup, and 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 I just want you to talk because because I'm I'm doing all this research on straight white men, mm. and I need to. F is there a straight white man in the house? I mean, what about Clay? Right but now. I'm not sure. No, no, not Clay. <laughs> Somebody. Okay, I, I have an I have an idea. I can I can make it up. I have an idea of. Um, and it's it's really obvious and really bad, but maybe I can make it interesting. But but it would require Kate to be like in a wig and the makeup and something impossibly yeah. glamorous. It should be just the look, a young Jean look for Kate. Yeah, and then I want well, I, and then I want to egg really her. I want to I want to get her to, to have the makeup. We have forty five minutes. Let's get busy. Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it. it. But how did the idea come to you to do Untitled Feminist? Oh, I just wanted to make a show for my twelve year old self that I thought oh. would have helped me at that age. Uh -huh. And so that was basically the concept of the show. Okay, this is the one. Ooh, that was nice too. But I think this is the one. Uh, make it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's I think that's great. If we can make that sexy. But Oh, she was she was straight. right because she it, it, we need to hide that doorknob. So uh, if you could scoot a little to the right, uh -huh. yeah. Oh great, and that 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 thing looks like doctor's office yeah. also. It's perfect. It's perfect. Oh, yeah. oh, she looks beautiful. She looks beautiful. <laughs> Don't not too much of the sink. No sense of humor. Very beautiful. Very rich. 
Um, you know, you've, uh, you're, you're on vacation in Italy, somewhere beautiful, and you've come down with a stomach ailment and have had to go to the local doctor in this little village. Well, it was, um, it was this morning and came after a period of great pain. I was doubled over with a cramp that I had had all morning long. And when it came, it was rather explosive. And, well, there it was looking a little like particle board soaked in water or cork board soaked in water and, and lots of little bits was it. It's been like that for quite some time, every day. Never like chocolate pudding or Nutella. Always, always the particles. A picture of Ron and me, a photo. Do you want to see that, Z? Yeah, I'll get the leaner. It's, okay. I, <laughs> she I wants want, to show that. I want to see you guys. <laughs> so anyway, many years later, uh, after Ron had died, and uh, the, I had repainted the entire apartment white. I thought, oh, I'll start all over. White, white, white. And then I was lying here, and I, you know, I wake up at night, and, and I would wake up to this, like, white room, and I felt like I was in a mental hospital. Oh. So I decided to have it wallpapered, and this is an 18th century English design. Wow. Where'd you get it? At a wallpaper place in Midtown, mm -hmm. and this old hippie guy from Woodstock put it in. And then Jim Fletcher and I painted the ceiling you may see, called Pharaoh's Gold. <sighs> What does pharaohs refer to? The pharaohs, you know. Oh, pharaohs. And, uh... I thought you said pharaohs. Well, F-E-Y-R-O-S-E. Which, -E. yeah. -E. <laughs> Which is nice, too. Pharaohs. <laughs> my idea for the bedroom was that it should look like the White House. That was my design idea. Did you know what the White House looked I like? I have taken a tour there. Oh, you have? I took a tour <laughs> the day R Richard Nixon left, oh. flew away on the helicopter. So and, uh, um, wait, 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 the bedroom, the bed what other really important um, scenes have taken place here? Oh, in your life? honey, I've lived in this apartment uh, 32 uh, and a half years. I moved in in uh, late 1979. It was the apartment of one of my best friends, David Schweitzer, and he was living in Los Angeles, and he, uh, the crazy Andy Warhol people, Alan Midget, was living here and trashed the place, and then Alan he was a Warhol hanger-on type person. You know, one of those very good-looking young men, mm. kind of drug hustler, whatever, mm -hmm. would-be actor, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway, David said, oh, I have to get rid of Alan. He tried to steal the apartment, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I saw Elizabeth LeCompte in the Maryland Project. Yes. And all those early things. And I met Ron then. I met Ron then, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll never forget, one of the first times I went to see a show, and after he said, oh, I'm having a party at my house in Brooklyn. Why don't you come, me and my girlfriend? And I had never been to Brooklyn. It was like, you know, I only lived in New York a few... Manhattan, never heard of it. Yeah, right. 
And so we sat in the bottom of this van and didn't have all any windows. And we were, Whose van was I it? I don't know. Some Ron drove the van? <laughs> yeah. It was probably Liz's van. It was some old... The one that's in the movie in Route 1 and 9. <laughs> right, probably. And I was like, where are we going? I didn't even know him at all, but I was, thought he was very attractive. Anyway, we went to this party, and that was one of the first times I spent time with him socially. But moving forward, years later... Who where told did you, you that? Where did you keep your money in, in the... Which was this, the 70s or the 80s? 70s. Did you, 70, did you keep 70s. it in, like, your shoe or something? No. No. <laughs> Do, like, in case, so you wouldn't get robbed by a hustler? Or? That's I, how I... You know, I almost I'm got robbed to... once, but I fought them off. I kicked, on 42nd Street, I kicked them. Anyway. It's hot in here. Good. Uh, so anyway, I went to see the show, and I was like, and then it was over, and it was only like eleven thirty or something. And you were with these people at no, the no. Show. I went by, by myself. Yourself. I used to go to the bottom line by myself. And then I was like, it's, it's not fun. so late. I'm, I want to go out. I want to do something. So I went to this gay bar called the Bar, <laughs> right on the corner, and it was like this. You know, I had been there before. It's like this big gay bar. So I walk in, and the first person I see is Ron Vauder. And he plied me with drinks, and we stayed there till like four o'clock when it closed. And then he invited me over to his apartment for tea. And I was like, tea? <laughs> said, All right. And he lived in this horrible, filthy, tiny little apartment on, um, what's that street? McDougal, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so wait, the, you, you said that it's not the first time you guys are lying in this bed today? No. Are you kidding? <laughs> when was the first time? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I've known Kate many, many years. Of course, she's somewhat younger than I am, but... Only somewhat. Only, yeah, right. She's been here many times, innumerable times she's been here. By herself, with others. Do you have a Christmas tree? No, I haven't had one for years. Why? Uh, I'm, as I saw, I think I'm part of the war on Christmas. I think Christmas is good for children. Right. And Ron always wanted a tree, and we had a lovely tree. Good night. But um, it's so by yourself. I don't know.